Ah, the Library of Alexandria, a legend of the Mediterranean, hailed as one of the largest hubs of knowledge in the known world, and you all know its supposed fate. The library existed for centuries until Julius Caesar, or the Christians, or Aurelian, wow, a lot of people got blamed for this, burned down the library, destroying thousands of scrolls that contained all the knowledge of mankind, and this collapse resulted in humanity being set back centuries. Or did it? For starters, this is barely even accurate, and the myth that the burning of the library set humanity back centuries is heavily debated. The only way to determine the truth is to start at the beginning with the history of the Library of Alexandria. Libraries were not a foreign idea to the Mediterranean, with the earliest recorded archive of texts found in the Sumerian city-state of Uruk. Our story doesn't start until after the conquests of Alexander the Great, where the empire he forged was split into three empires after his death, with our focus staying with the Ptolemies ruling Egypt. Given the desire to promote Hellenistic culture, as well as Egypt's supply of papyrus, the Library of Alexandria was slated to become the largest repository of knowledge in the area. Despite the status of the library, its history is confusing, as most histories are. The earliest record we have is the Letter of Aristia, which would be very helpful if not for the many inaccurate details that cast the whole text into doubt. According to credible sources, the actual start of the library begins with Ptolemy I Soter's son, Ptolemy II Philadelphus, who ruled from 283 to 246 BCE. The library's original use was not to spread knowledge, but to show off the wealth Egypt had, though it did still aid rulers from time to time. Over time, Ptolemaic rulers continued to expand the library, introducing new books through what boiled down to a state-funded trip to every Barnes & Noble available. People on behalf of the government would scope out libraries in major cities such as Athens and purchase as many books as possible. Under decree of Philadelphia, any books that came to port were taken to the library, copied, and returned to their owners. Let me repeat that. These books were copied and then returned. This will be important later. As well as housing literature, the library served as a home to a menagerie of scholars, poets, philosophers, researchers, and many more. The library would continue to expand throughout the decades, but all good things must come to an end, which it did when Ptolemy VIII Viscon, not as cool of a name, expelled all foreign scholars from Alexandria. This marks the beginning of the end for the library, but it still has a couple centuries of life in it. This expulsion resulted in a diaspora of the Alexandrian scholarship, with schools being founded throughout the Mediterranean. This began the shift away from Alexandria and towards a decentralized network of knowledge. The library wasn't the only thing struggling in Egypt, as the Ptolemaic dynasty started to lose their grip on the throne from the 2nd century BCE onwards. The library was forgotten, as more important issues such as civil unrest took precedence. The position of head librarian, once hailed as a hallmark of intellectual gift and prestige, now became just a title, its owners lost to history. Now, things may seem bleak, but trust me, they can get worse. Case in point, during one of the many Roman civil wars, Julius Caesar was besieged in Alexandria. His soldiers set fire to the ships docked in the port, which eventually spread to the city itself. Sources disagree on if the fire impacted the library, with some saying 40,000 scrolls were lost, others saying the fire barely hit the city. Overall, while the library of Alexandria was likely damaged, it kept going, with the geographer Strabo mentioning visiting the Mausoleum of Alexandria, a larger research institution the library was attached to, in 20 BC, several decades after Caesar's fire. Sadly, Strabo's depiction of the Mausoleum shows just how far the library had fallen, not even mentioned as a separate entity to the institution itself. When Alexandria became a part of Rome, its status fell. What was once the capital of Egypt, a hub of knowledge in the Mediterranean, became just another Roman city. As Roman reliance of grain in the region declined, the importance of the city declined, and other libraries sprang up throughout the Roman Empire. In 272 AD, Emperor Aurelian fought to recapture Alexandria from the Palmyrene Queen Zenobia, in the process destroying the quarter of the city in which the library was located. If that didn't finish the library, Diocletian's siege of Alexandria in 297 certainly destroyed it. The library stood for over 500 years, spreading knowledge to the Mediterranean, only to suffer a slow decline into relative obscurity before complete annihilation. Pretty depressing for what amounts to a glorified storage container. Later on, more drama would unfold, as the Serapeum, a sort of spiritual successor to the library, would be persecuted by Roman Emperor Theodosius I for being a pagan temple, with this conflict resulting in Christians demolishing the temple. Though, if the Serapeum even housed a significant number of scrolls is questionable. Still, the reputation of the Library of Alexandria receives after death, while impressive, is somewhat questionable. Now that we know the history, we can determine if the destruction of this library doomed humanity, or if it had barely, if any, impact on our future.
As the myth goes, the destruction of the Library of Alexandria, no matter the reasons for it or who orchestrated it, set humanity back centuries, and without it we would be on Mars, understand immortality, and Daredevil wouldn't have been cancelled. But this narrative has several problems. For starters, let's go back to when we are talking about Ptolemy II. Let me repeat that. These books were copied and then returned. I don't know about you, but last time I checked, the damaging of a copy does not damage the original. Unless you're using a voodoo doll, in which case we have bigger concerns. The library did not contain the sole copy of thousands upon thousands of ancient writings. It contained duplicates of writings that passed through Alexandria, almost like a, you know, library. The destruction of the library is also frequently overhyped, making it seem like the entirety of knowledge in the Mediterranean was burned, lost to the ashes, resulting in centuries of zero technological development. First, none of the fabled destructions were worse than time itself. Even Caesar's fire pales in comparison to the decline of the library phase from a lack of attention. Even the destruction of the Library of Alexandria and the Serapeum during sieges slash revolts weren't that significant. The library had already fallen out of favor at the time. It was more like turning off life support compared to an epic duel for the fate of humanity. Second, the library was not the only hub of knowledge, not even in the Mediterranean. This is where the chart comes into play. The chart is a common sight to see in discussions about the Library of Alexandria, as a lot of people have this notion that if those gosh darn Christians weren't so close-minded and didn't burn down the library, we'd already be traveling the cosmos. This idea doesn't work for many reasons, most notably that human progress doesn't work like that. The Mediterranean is not the whole world, it's one slice of a much grander Earth. The claim that the burning of the Library of Alexandria sent humanity back centuries ignores the technological advancements made by the Chinese, Japanese, Indians, as well as the entirety of two continents. The achievements of the Mayans weren't completely annihilated because Caesar had a bad time in Egypt, or a local conflict between pagans and Christians. The idea of a Dark Age itself is incredibly misleading. The Dark Ages weren't a period where nothing was done, no progress made, with the Islamic Golden Age occurring simultaneously to the so-called Dark Ages. While Europe may not have been the most stable it had ever been, knowledge thrived in other parts of the world. Historians continue to distance this time period from the Dark Age moniker, preferring terms such as the Early Middle Ages, which, while equally fantastical, portrays the time period in a more accurate way. Also, despite people saying Rome's fall was the start of this dark period in European history, Rome kept going! The eastern half, what we call Byzantium, kept trucking even as the west started to collapse. Throughout this video, I've discussed both the history of the library and the faults with the myths surrounding it. But why do I see it as overrated? I've said myself that it was an important hub of knowledge in the Mediterranean world, and its destruction a depressing tale. But for me, the fascinating part of researching the library wasn't the library itself, it was all the information surrounding it. Learning about the Ptolemaic dynasty, how one of the major parts of Egyptian history was founded by one of Alexander the Great's generals is fascinating, as well as seeing how the Hellenistic culture fused with Egypt. During my research, the Library of Alexandria began to seem less and less important compared to the influences different cultures have had on the region. People treat the Library of Alexandria as a behemoth, a massive beacon of knowledge and hope in an otherwise savage world. But if we take off this lens and view the library for what it truly is, we see a hub of both knowledge and culture, and the ways that culture evolve over time are infinitely more fascinating to explore than any library could ever be. While the Library of Alexandria was important, we shouldn't lose sight of the bigger picture. The library may have collapsed, but the culture around it remained, and we are better off because of it. Thanks for watching. This is my first real attempt at producing a half-competent video, so let me know how I did. I didn't have enough time to incorporate all the topics I found during research, such as the important libraries being founded throughout the Roman world, where this myth started, and other interesting anecdotes, so I'll include some links in the description for further reading. If you're a big fan of the Library of Alexandria, then understand this. I wouldn't have explored this portion of history nearly as much if it wasn't for this video, and extension, this library. So thanks, Ptolemy II Philadelphus. Your name is still really funny.